I kid you not, it is like a full-blown winter wonderland here outside. And I could not be happier. This is this is totally up my alley. We're gonna lower this just a tad bit because I feel like too tall right now. I don't like that. And that's a problem. I never have in real life. Oh my gosh, hi. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and happy 2024. It's a new year, same old me though, but this year we're gonna become an even better version of ourselves, not just me, all of you guys. And I hope that I can be a positive influence throughout the entirety of 2024 and use my platform in a correct way to make that happen. Gosh, it feels so good to be home. If you guys are new, hi. I just came back from studying abroad on the ocean for three months. I did a program called Semester at Sea. It was the most incredible experience of my life. So, so grateful and blessed to have been able to do it. But I will say I'm so, so happy to be back home in my routine and with my dog, obviously, with matcha, with my friends and family. Although my family is not here, we've got Catherine in DC and then my parents in Texas. Home is wherever you make it and my friends here definitely feel like home i'm actually gonna let this coffee cool down for a second but how cute is this cup it says be the person your dog thinks you are this is a huge staple in texas i think it's el arroyo the sign so if you're from texas let me know if you recognize this i mainly wanted to film this video because i got a lot of questions asking what my goals are for 2024 where i see the direction of my channel and then kind of just random questions, answered a couple on my Instagram stories, but then I just decided to save the rest for a video like this. So it's just gonna be like a really cozy one, nice chill little video to ring in the new year. I wrote down some questions that stood out, so we're just gonna get right into it. Are you going to stay close with friends you met on the ship? Absolutely. I actually had one of my friends send me the sweetest longest text yesterday I like woke up in the middle of the night at 2 a.m I met the most incredible group of people on semester at sea from all over the world I met people from out of the u.s. Like estonia ukraine mexico lithuania like everywhere that you can think of and i've never had the opportunity to go to school with people from outside of the united states so having them and then the people scattered across the u.s it's been such a treat having these friendships and i absolutely want to stay close with them and we've already started planning some reunions which makes my heart so happy because being on that ship in close quarters with people for a solid three months you build friendships super quickly and very deeply and that's an experience that people who were never on the voyage may have a hard time understanding. My friends on Semester at Sea know a different side of me than the people back at home. And so I would be really sad if I was not able to continue the friendships with those people, but luckily I am. And I'm so happy that I've been able to already just keep in touch and update my friends on everything. Who has been taking care of matcha? My parents have been an absolute blessing. They took care of matcha while I was gone on Semester at Sea. I know that matcha absolutely adores my parents. They just had the craziest, most funny relationship. My parents would call me or send me videos while I was at sea. Matcha just adores my dad and vice versa. My dad has all these nicknames for him, like little guy, the prince, macher. <laughs> like, it's so funny. And I'm very grateful that my family was there to take care of him because getting a dog obviously is a huge responsibility. And I'm so happy that now that I'm off of the voyage, Matcha and I are gonna be able to have our life back together because he's just the cutest little thing ever. And his personality, oh my gosh, I swear he's like me and a dog but 20 times more chaotic and maybe a little bit more sass. I'm obsessed with my espresso. Mm, it's so good. Favorite places to shop. Off the top of my head, we'll go with Aritzia, Dick Sporting Goods. I'm a day one girly. Recently, I've been really liking Cotton On, Urban Outfitters. Zara has really good staple pieces. So does Brandy Melville. Call me basic. Maybe my list is very basic. That is where I get basically all of my clothes from. Do you actually like living alone? So this is a question that not only do I get asked all the time on the internet, but I get asked asked in person from my friends here, the people that I met on semester at sea, and a lot of adults always ask me this question. So to straight up give you an answer, I absolutely love it. I think at some point everybody in their life once if things align right where they can live alone i would absolutely recommend it because i think it is the best way to learn how to be comfortable in the silence and with yourself and because technology is such a relevant thing in our lives i've always noticed that it makes being alone with ourselves 
just a very uncomfortable thing. I am such a grandma, but I have this word search puzzle. Let me go get it. I got this one from Barnes and Noble and you can really get these anywhere, but it's just a large print word search puzzle. It is like my favorite thing to do while I'm eating breakfast, drinking my coffee, because sometimes being on your phone first thing in the morning is just not a productive way to start any sort of day. And something like this is not only good for your brain, um, cause your girl's not trying to get dementia or Alzheimer's. I want to have a very happy, healthy, cognitive brain for as long as I can. And so I have found that it's just a very relaxing way to start my morning. In high school, I probably would have looked at myself sideways for and been like, what are you doing? That's kind of weird, but it's really not. And that's just a small example of the many things that I've learned about myself that I actually really, really enjoy doing because I live alone. Obviously there is the aspect of things being a little scary, which is completely normal, but that's what having proper means of self-protection, a crazy wicked alarm system, um, and security cameras are for. I know that God is always watching out for me. I just could not recommend it enough. Also, don't even get me started on cooking and baking. Being able to cook for myself living alone, it's so nice actually seeing what goes into my food, what I'm putting into my body, and then just also having the fun experimentations with new recipes and whatnot. Favorite self-care activity. Oh, I have so many of these. First one, packing up the car, getting a little picnic blanket, and finding like a green grass hill and just watching the sunset whether it's stargazing watching the sunset watching the sunrise or just listening to music and just reading a book that is free therapy <laughs> and it really does not cost any money at all maybe just the money that you would spend driving there that is my favorite form of therapy and luckily there's this hill in idaho called simplot hill favorite hill in the whole entire world and all summer when i had my single girl summer that's just exactly what i would do i would just pack a picnic blanket go up there and read until it got really dark outside <laughs> another favorite self-care activity that i love to do is just a simple face mask i feel like you could never go wrong with those it truly is the definition of self-care but it's also fun it's a very girly thing and then of course you get the glowy skin after i'm gonna put my favorite mask that i love to use on the screen and um, I'll also link it down below. Goals for 2024. Oh my gosh, I feel like I have so many. How do I even choose? Um, I'm gonna narrow it down to three that just come off the top of my head. I would love to pick up a new hobby, whether that's playing guitar, which has been something that I've always wanted to do and learn. I think that would be really neat. Also, it would expand the instruments and variety that I know how to play. As of now, I only know how to play piano and ukulele, but I think guitar is such a neat instrument. And my favorite song, Best Part by Daniel Caesar and her. Oh my gosh, if I could just learn that on the guitar, I think my whole life would be complete. Another hobby that I would love to pick up is pickleball. I know a lot of people picked that up during COVID. I was not one of those people. I think I like missed out on the train of that, but it looks so much fun. And if you've ever played, let me know if you actually enjoy it and if it's worth getting into, because I think that is just it just looks really cool. Second goal for 2024 is I want to travel more within the US. I recognize that I was so fortunate to be able to travel to over 10 different countries in 2023. And then months before I even went on semester at sea, my sister and I traveled to Edinburgh, Scotland and Copenhagen, Denmark. I felt like all of 2023, I had the travel bug and I absolutely love it. However, traveling abroad makes you really appreciate your home as well. And there is just so much in the United States that I feel like people kind of overlook. Like I always thought that to see really cool things, I had to get out of the US and I had to go to all these cool places like Switzerland where the landscape just looks out of a painting. But now I realize, especially after moving to Idaho, that you could go right next door and it's a completely different scenery than where you live and the u.s really has like polar opposite climates beaches mountain ranges you really just get a whole mix and so i feel like i'm kind of in the perfect location because idaho is right by oregon california utah wyoming montana oh my gosh i would love to go to montana in 2024 so yeah just taking road trips, less flights, more road trips. I think that would be really neat. Um, and then just exploring Idaho, like the whole state, because I really would love to go to Coeur d'Alene one day. That's on my list. The last goal that I have for 2024 is to really dive into my faith. There was no chapel or church service on semester at sea. So for three months, I did not go to church. And that's no excuse because within each country, I could have gone to church and I could have found a service. I really don't have any justification for that. Um, 
I wanted to spend as much time as I could with my friends exploring the countries and so that was not really a priority for me and although I saw God work in so many incredible ways while on that voyage through examples and just day-to-day -day experiences in these various countries the aspect of actually going to church was something I knew that I was missing and so now that I'm back home there really is no excuse and so whether or not I decide to stay practicing my Catholic faith or exploring different branches of Christianity, that is something that I would really, really like to like hound down on and figure out for myself because now that I'm 19, about to turn 20 in two months, that is something that needs to become a big reality. I'm a firm believer that that shapes the person that you end up with, um, how you raise your kids one day, and then just the values that you have for yourself. So that's my goal for 2024. <laughs> I saw this question and I had never heard anybody phrase a question like this, so I wrote it down. Favorite song for each of your favorite genres. So if you know me or if you follow my Spotify playlist, I have just about every single genre of music that you could think of. I never like to limit myself because why would you? There's so many options, the world is wide. I'm going to go onto my Spotify and basically read out for every genre, like what my top favorite song would be. For country, Favorite song of all time would be Wrapped by George Strait. For R&B, best part, obviously. <laughs> or, oh gosh, We Might Even Be Falling In Love by Victoria Monet and Bryson Tiller. Oh my gosh, that is like seriously one of the best songs ever. For dance, hype music, I would say Young Hearts Run Free, the 2023 edit by Candy Station and Benji LaVita. For like throwbacks, Rocketeer, one of my favorite rap songs. It's kind of like a slower one though, Jaded by Drake. And then pop, right now it would be Only You by Eddie Benjamin and Alessia Cara. So, so good. I'll put my Spotify username on the screen and in the description. And there's just so many songs. I already know I'm missing so many of the genres, so I'll just let you guys check out that Spotify playlist for yourself. I love, love, love music so, so much. It is one of God's greatest gifts to us. Go purge the Spotify playlist and I promise you, you're gonna find some good songs. Book recommendations. Okay, so I've got three book recommendations off the top of my head. Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. That is like the number one book that I would read for anybody who is either towards the end of their high school or onwards, starting their college or just an adult in general. It is such a good motivating book and what better time to read a book like that than at the beginning of the year. It'll make you rethink everything. Second book I would recommend is Where the Crawdads Sing. The movie, amazing. The book, even better. Third book that I would recommend is Verity by Colleen Hoover. That's the only Colleen Hoover book that I've read. I've been told to read all of the other ones, but Verity was the one and only that I read and it was so, so good. Very like spicy, thriller, like psychological. It's really gonna make you think, so those are my recommendations. Favorite Christmas gift that you received this year? Honestly, my parents are the hardest workers that I know, so I feel very fortunate for all of the gifts that they got for me. By the way, I did document and film Christmas Day, so if you wanna see that, wait for it. It'll be in the description, you guys can watch it. But if I had to choose, I would say my favorite gift of all actually ended up being an experience. There's this new place that opened called the Shabby Wick in Dripping Springs, which is my hometown. And my mom booked this candle making class and it was so much fun. We smelled over like a hundred different scents. I got to actually learn how to make candles in a way that I've never been able to. Like I've taken candle making classes before, but they don't really let you do that much. And so this one we did from start to finish and the end result and just having like a physical product that you made with love, it was a really good experience. And that is my favorite gift. Two more questions. How many guys have you kissed on SAS? Don't worry, I will be doing a whole semester at sea Q and A, chit chat, whatever. That's gonna be a whole separate video in itself. So get ready on the lookout. And if you have any questions, comment them down below so that I can add them to what I'll be covering. But I thought, you know, I'll throw one in here, why not? How many guys did I kiss on Semester at Sea? Zero. I'll explain why in another video. Semester at Sea is a freaking love boat. And why be easy? To each their own, but for me, I do not just go around kissing anybody unless I see potential. So, zero there's your answer contrary to what people may have believed okay last question i feel like this is a good way to end it because you know new year new y'all question is easy ways to make money as a college student i wrote down three ways i think personally that these are the best ways to make money that are legit and not like scamming 
and they're wholesome too. So like, yeah, this is why I wrote them down. First one, so easy, babysitting. You don't have to pay taxes whenever you babysit because one, you either get paid in cash or two, people Venmo you. You guys, taxes take up 15% of your paycheck. So if you can babysit, have the joy of being around kids, but then also, you know, not having to worry about giving your paycheck to Uncle Sam. Second, the app Rover. In a nutshell, Rover is an app where you can walk people's dogs and you get paid for it. Yeah, I'll let you guys look up the rest because I don't want this to sound like a sponsorship, but Rover is the app. Last way to make honest, good money is by simply asking one of your professors at the end of a semester if you can be a TA. That is basically an assistant to help like click slides for the next classes and you just kind of help out. You don't really have to do that much, but if you get on your professor's good side and you want to have something to go in your resume, you also want to build connections with your professor and you want to have a job that maybe doesn't require you to like do a lot of physical labor, that's an easy way to make money. And actually one of my best friends is a TA for our favorite professor. So Mr. Ritz, if you're watching this, we love you. You're still my favorite professor to this day. Okay, on that note, I'm going to go change into a gym outfit, go get a little workout in, and then yeah, probably make dinner and just admire this little snow globe that I'm in right now. I absolutely adore the snow and it feels so good to be back here at home. I experienced summer for a solid six months because I was on semester at sea. So finally was able to bring out the turtlenecks. Thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait for 2024. I just have such a good feeling about this year. I wanna push myself to be the best version of myself. And I hope, like I mentioned in the beginning, that I can inspire and use my platform to help motivate you guys to do the same. I start my second semester of college in two days. Am I nervous? Yeah, but I'm also really excited. If you guys liked today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, don't do anything. I love y'all so much. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Ciao. Just a cup is all I need. I can close my eyes and breathe. A song in good conversations tastes just like medication.